Hey everyone, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So in today's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys a simple way of saving your game data in your Godot game. So let's say for example you've just got a simple clicker game here, right? So this is just a little example game that I made up for this tutorial. So as you can see, when I press this button here, our clicks go up. However, there's no way of saving the clicks when I close the game and then reopen it again, I'm going to reopen it to the disappointment of my clicks being gone. So how are we going to be able to save our clicks? Well today, I'm going to be teaching you guys. Alrighty, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So what we're going to do first off is I'm going to duplicate this button here in my scene, so I'm just going to press Ctrl D to duplicate it, and this is going to be my save button. So uh, if you guys already don't have your own example scene set up for testing, um, you can set one up if you want to, either that or of course you can just use one of your current projects you're already working on. And then uh, I'm just going to call this button here save, and there we go. So when we press this button what will happen is it will save our game, however it can't save our game yet since we actually need to do the code for that. So here's what we're going to do. So in my script here, so as you can see this is my script for my game, so we have a variable called clicks which equals to zero, and then whenever we press our click button, because our, uh, our click button function is connected to the pressed signal on our uh, click button, when it, what ends up happening is our clicks go up by one, and then we grab our click count text, and then we have, we show of course clicks to show, you know, what we're counting, and then we convert the clicks integer into a string, and then we show that afterwards, so yeah. Alrighty, so what we're going to do is we are going to create a function called save underscore game. And then we're going to create a new variable in this function called var save, and we're going to go equals file access. So basically we're going to be using file access for this, and then we're going to go dot open. And then in quotes, in these parentheses here, you just want to write user dot dot, and then you just want to do the two forward slashes. And uh, what we're going to be, and the reason as to why we're doing this is because this is going to be our user data folder where we are saving our data to. So if you go into the project tab here and you click open user data folder, this here is the folder where your game data will be saved. So do take note of the path to your user data folder as well in case you ever want to go to it uh, manually yourself. Where your app user data is, this is where all of your game, all of your Godot games data is stored. So as you can see here, these are all my Godot projects. And uh, this is where all the data is stored for them. Alrighty, so yeah, again, this is where we are going to be saving our game data into the app user data folder. Alright, so what we're going to do here is now what you want to do is you want to write the name of your file. Now an interesting fact here is, so let's say for example we call this file clicks.omo. Now you might be thinking to yourself, but wait, is omo an actual file type? And well technically it can be, you know, you can call this file type literally whatever you want, you could literally even make it skibbity if you wanted to, if you want to call this clicks.skibbity that's totally fine, uh, it's just going to be saving as a text file, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it all works, I literally just tried it out before, because usually what I do is I use dot dat, because that's how I learnt it, but then I just realised like, oh wait a second, no, you can actually literally do whatever sort of file extension you want. But yeah, so what I'm going to be doing for this one is I'm going to be calling this save uh, file clicks and then we're going to write dot and I'm just going to do omo for this example because you know I'm omogonix. And then uh, after your uh, little quote here, so now outside of the quote you want to do a comma and we're going to go file access dot write. So what we're doing is we are writing a new file and it is uh, called clicks.omo and we're going to go save.store underscore string so we're going to be storing a string and what that will be is that will be click our clicks but converted into a string so see how here we have str clicks well that's exactly what we're going to be doing here so we're going to go str clicks and boom now we have stored our clicks into this, uh, into this uh, file here 
and we're going to go save.close. It's always important that uh, after saving or even loading save data that you then close that file afterwards. It's very important. So yeah, because I mean I've had certain, you know, uh, save related issues from not doing that, so that's why I say it's important. Alrighty, so there is our save game function. This is how we basically just, you know, simply save data in Godot. So to check that this all works, what we're going to do is we are going to go to our button 2, which is the save button. And then what you want to do is you want to go to your pressed signal. So you want to switch to no tab, press the press signal here, go edit. And then uh, what we're going to do is I'm then going to write save game, since that's the function that we want to connect to. And then boom, so now we've got our save button connected to our save game function. Alrighty, so here's what I'm going to do now. So let's actually give this a test. So I'm just going to press this a couple times. Alright, we've got 27 clicks, then I'm going to press save. So then we're going to stop the game, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my app user data folder. And as you can see here, our file has been saved, clicks.omo. So as you can see, it is an omo file indeed. And then if we actually um, go choose to open with notepad, so if we go open with notepad, as you can see, our clicks have been stored. So now we have 27 written in this file here. So yeah, so clicks.omo was successfully saved. And now all we need to do is load that data. So if we go start the game here, as you can see, our data didn't get loaded. But here's what we can do in order to do that. So we're going to create a new ready function. So it's going to be func underscore ready. And we're going to be using the ready function in order to load our data when the scene starts. So what we're going to do is um, we're just going to write pass for now. I'm just going to write a new function. We're going to call it load game, func load game. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write var clicks. Oh wait, no, we're, we're not going to call it the same name as a... We'll just call it click data. There we go. Because um, I don't want to have the same variable name as a, you know, this clicks variable here. And then we're going to call it file access. And well, basically all you need to do is just copy this line here. Paste it in here. The only difference being that instead of file access.write, we use file access.read. Because we're just reading the file, not writing on it. And then what we need to do is we then need to go if click data. And the reason as to why we do this is because we're checking if the click data uh, save file actually exists. Because if it doesn't exist, then we can't use the data, right? So if click data, so if the click data file exists, then what will happen is clicks will equal to int. So we're going to be converting our string into an int. We're going to be doing click underscore data dot get as text. And then, yeah, it's going to be converting it into an integer for our actual clicks. And then, uh, of course, as well, what we need to do is we then need to grab this and then just paste that underneath here. So then our click count updates for us to visually see. And uh, yeah. So now in the ready function, we're just going to write load underscore game, and boom. So that should be it. So now if we actually go load the game, hopefully that will have all worked, and yes it did. As you can see, 27 clicks are now shown, and when we click, it just continues up and up and up. So now we're at 56 clicks, I go save, stop, and boom, 56 clicks. So not only is this form of saving useful for just simple things like saving the amount of clicks a player has in a game, it's also useful for saving your player's health, you know, your stamina, your player's position, you know, because uh, you could have like a different save file for each uh, position coordinate if you wanted to. But yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different uh, sorts of values that you can save, whether it be strings, uh, you know, integers, floats. Uh, that you can use these save files for. And like I said, the cool thing is too, you can literally give it your own dot at the end, so dot omo, dot whatever you want. You don't have to use, uh, you know, anything particular. So yeah. 
So anyways guys, that is the end of this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you did all learn a thing or two about just simply saving and loading data in Godot. But uh, yeah, I'll see you all again next time. Bye bye.